Dear participants and colleagues, I am very happy and proud to present you the second part of my lecture about coconut at this special conference, New Now, during this week of coconut knowledge sharing with the people of the sea. Fascinating stories, legends and symbolic representations are linked to the coconut palm in all the Pacific region. Here, the coconut is leveled as a venerated item in economy, religion, gastronomy, and cultural practices. However, Sages and storytellers from all over the Pacific Ocean are now present in Hawaii for this festival and international conference. These elders are much more competent than I am to talk about their traditions. Therefore, my contribution will be to present traditions and symbolic representations of the coconut palm originating from countries and cultures outside the Pacific region. Before detailing coconut-related traditions, I will summarize the symbolic links that exist between coconut, coconut tree and the human, body and mind, sometimes in comparison with the symbolism associated to other plants. I will mainly present traditions and symbols from two cultural areas. The first one gathers Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines, and the second one India and Sri Lanka. I will conclude by summarizing five representations of the coconut palm which, at a global level, guide our social representations, our perceptions and our choices. I will only refer to some Pacific traditions as a basis for comparison or generalization to help document and contextualize the symbols. For instance, in Polynesia, the most widespread coconut legends, which exists in various variations, concerns a princess or a goddess named Hina or Sina, a giant sacred eel or tuna, and sometimes a demigod named Maui. At the end of these stories, the head of the fish is generally cut and buried, and the first coconut born from this head. These stories of Hina and the eel are part of a coherent set of legends which globally tell of the birth of agriculture and the domestication of plants. The legends of creation of crop plants generally tell that somebody dies, and that the plants are born from the various parts of its buried body. Following this observation, certain anthropologists put forth an original assumption to explain that agriculture would have been born in the tombs. When our far ancestors started to bury their deaths, in the tombs they put jewels, weapons but also food which contained seeds. These seeds germinated, and this would have greatly contributed to the birth of agriculture. Here are presented some of the symbolic links that exist between coconut, coconut tree and human bodies, in comparison with the symbolism of another plants. The banyan is an enormous tree with plenty of trunks and aerial roots, which can live for several hundred years. Many tropical societies recognize it as a symbol of the community. On the other hand, the coconut palm is generally a symbol of an individual human being. Like humans, the coconut palm generally lives between 50 and 100 years. He has a unique trunk, and his leaf crown looks like hair. A study of ethnobotany in Vanuatu perfectly sums up the analogy of the coconut palm and the woman. It tells us, the coconut palm is therefore endowed with intelligence, and it has the same biological cycles as a woman. Fertile at the age of seven, it will slowly enter menopause around the age of 50 and die at over 70. During his life, a fertile organ will be produced every month. After fertilization, each flower will take 9 to 12 months to transform into fruits mature enough to detach from their mother and live another life. Her children, often illegitimate, because of unknown paternal origin, will live not far from their mother or take to the sea, sailing on the ocean. Linguistic analysis provides an interesting approach to describe the symbolism associated with a plant. As seen in the example of Indonesian Balinese dialects, there these is a strong relationship between the different organs of the coconut palm and the human body. The coconut sap Toddy, is called getalt, geti, which also means blood. The leaf crown is named bok, which also mean hair. The same word, isi, designates both coconut kernel and human flesh. Coconut shell and human skull are called cow or kankok. The coconut is designated as nyuh or nyonyo, and also mean breast. 
The Indonesian term NYUH is obviously related to NU, one of the Pacific words to designate the coconut. In Indonesia, all the field work for the coconut palms is traditionally reserved to the men. Sometimes the women have even prohibition to touch the coconut palm, because it could to some extent aspire its fruitfulness. Of course, precisely because it is forbidden, we can imagine that women do not deprive themselves of discreetly touching the coconut trees. Here are some more illustrations of the cultural role of the coconut palm in Indonesia and its symbolic system. Traditional healers play an important role in Indonesia culture. Some ritual ceremony linked to purification or traditional medicine are using coconut from specific varieties. Here for instance this description is for a yellow dwarf variety. In South Sulawesi, as is often the case in Polynesia, traditional medicine considers not only the biochemical effectiveness of the products but also the positioning in space, both symbolic and geographical, and the method of harvesting the plants which provide these medicines. For instance, the medicinal coconut oil must be made from a coconut that was in a bunch growing in the direction of the rising sun. It must be harvested by a ritual specialist, called Sanro, who climbs down with the coconut in his teeth, rather than throwing it to the ground, since it must never touch the earth. Here is a coconut palm whose stem is dressed by a couple at the time of a traditional ceremony on the island of Nusa Penida. The Air Flight MH370 from Malaysia Airlines was an international passenger flight that disappeared on 8 March 2014. In Malaysia, the powerlessness of the authorities to find an explanation led airport officials to appeal to the most unorthodox of well-intentioned support. Shamans were asked to carry out magical ceremonies and rituals inside the airport itself, to try to locate the place where the plane was lost. This illustrates the importance of coconuts in Malaysian magical rituals. This is also the case in the Philippines. A recent study shows that coconut is used as an ingredient in most of the ritual traditional activities. In the Manabo tribe of Surigao del Sur, among 12 recorded rituals, coconut was used for 11. Those were related to healing, repentance, wedding, asking permission to enter the forest, thanksgiving for the harvest, house building, baptism, forgiveness, birth, burial, and full moon festival. Coconut leaves also play an important role in ceremonies of many religions. We will now start to explore the second cultural area, India and Sri Lanka. In India, coconut is mentioned in the post-Vedic writings as the epic of Mahabharata, which dates from around 3000 before Christ. An Indian legend from the Punjab region well illustrates the female symbolic significance of the coconut tree. A long time ago, the babies were born neither in the roses, nor in cabbages, but in the coconut. At this time, it was extremely easy to get a new baby. You just had to find a coconut palm, to harvest a coconut, to open this coconut, and to get a new baby inside. In fact, it was so easy to have a baby that parents neglected them. As soon as a baby started to cry or fell sick, the parents threw it in a corner and went to the coconut palm to gather a new baby. God was afflicted by seeing all these miserable and forsaken children who trailed on the ground and ended up dying. Then, it decided, it is necessary that I find a means so that the mothers take more care of their offspring. Since this time, children are no longer born in coconuts, and giving birth has become less easy. As in Indonesia and in the Philippines, coconut is used in many rituals and ceremonies in India and Sri Lanka. The link between the human fertility cult and coconut is particularly highlighted during wedding traditions and when a family moves to a new home. In 2025 in Mumbai, I was very proud to meet a family whose main business was selling at the craft market, selling clothes and jewelry specially made for coconuts. As it is a symbol of life, pregnant women are restricted from breaking the coconut as it is equal to killing a life form. It is also believed that the sound of breaking down coconut harms the fetus in the womb. In India also, there is a popular childhood story of an eel, the coconut tree, and a little girl named Tanaya, 
which amazingly resembles the Pacific legend of Princess Hina. Maybe this legend was brought back by a traveler from the Pacific Islands to India, but maybe not. Religious coconut breaking is symbolically considered as breaking one's ego or ahankara, and the flesh white portion of coconut is considered as the brain, which is selfish, egoist, and jealous. During the annual Adi festival of Sri Mahalakshmi Aman Temple, at Metamahadanapuram, in the Indian district of Karur, coconuts are broken on the heads of the female and male devotees by the temple priests. In Hinduism, Ganesha, or Ganapati, the lord of categories, is the god who removes obstacles. He is also the god of wisdom, intelligence, education and prudence, the patron of schools and knowledge workers. According to legend, he was also a naughty child who angered his parents so much that his father cut off his head. This head was lost and replaced by that of a young elephant. Ganesh is the most venerated god in India. In temples, for annual festivals, devotees sometimes build huge statues made of thousands of coconuts, or sometimes other plants such as sugarcane. One of the largest of these Ganesha statues was made with 9,000 coconuts. In Sri Lanka, coconut is mentioned in the 2nd century before Christ in the historical chronicle Mahawamsa. In this country, the first coconut plantation came during the rule of Agabody about 500 years after Christ. A famous variety traditionally associated to royalty is the king coconut, characterized by its bright orange color, and harvested for its water content. According to Mr. Indrajit Gunasekara, they're also a green form for king coconut, with a pink color inside the young fruit husk and the tips of the roots, which is said to have medicinal properties. This type of green coconut tree, reputed to be medicinal, is found from Indonesia to French Polynesia. In Sri Lanka, Vinayaka or Ganapati, the Buddhist deity equivalent of the Hindu god Ganesha, has also a strong link to coconut. Sri Lankans have a long tradition of climbing the coconut palm for producing toddy, the coconut wine obtained from the sap extracted from the inflorescence. Toddy is sometimes distilled into an alcohol called arak. Here we present some symbols associated with the coconut. These symbols, and our capacity to believe in them collectively, are conditioning our social behavior. They are also conditioning our purchasing behavior, for everyday products as well as for our choices of tourist trips. Like the vine in Europe, the coconut palm is a plant of civilization. Some years ago, I presented only four symbolic aspects. Now I've added a fifth, because this last is largely responsible for the current success of coconut. First, the original coconut palm, present long before the appearance of the man. Second, the cultural coconut palm. People say that, the coconut palm only germinates where it hears the sea or of the human voices. Third, the industrial coconut palm. In 1914, the coconut palm was the first world source of vegetable oil. Fourth, the touristic coconut palm. Most of tropical tourism booklets and videos, but also many other advertisings, use this image. The last fifth and new one is about organic, healthy, and pure. Many coconut products are white and transparent, symbol of purity. They are medicinal, dietary, and good for health. Marketing this last symbolism, strongly associated to sustainability, has recently led to a huge increase in coconut consumption. So, sustainability of the coconut sector is indeed crucial. It impacts and determines consumers' behavior. For the tourism industry evolving in a competitive environment, it becomes more and more important to stand out from the standard fare that tourism offers. Many tourists are no longer satisfied by golden exotic beaches bordered by anonymous palms, and those who are will more likely choose a cheaper destinations, which are generally not in the Pacific region. Coconut palms should no longer serve as symbols of anonymous and counterfeit exoticism. They tell true stories, specifically related to cultures of the Pacific region, 
in the framework of an ecotourism approach. In order to maintain and strengthen the cultural and symbolic presence of coconut in our societies, I am currently seeking to develop coconut ecomuseum projects. What is a ecomuseum? This is kind of a museum focused on the identity of a place, largely based on local participation, and aiming to enhance the welfare and development of local communities. Ecomuseums originated in France. The term, eco, is a shortened form for, ecology, but it refers especially to a new way to integrate cultural heritage. There are presently about 300 operating ecomuseums in the world, about 200 are in Europe. Our concept of Coconut Ecomuseum is suitable for all audiences, locals, and tourists, but with particular attention to young people and schoolchildren in the country, future repositories of knowledge. It is also designed from the outset to be financially profitable, while combining agriculture, tourism culture, science, and business. Our concept of Coconut Ecomuseum is based on seven components. First, exhibition galleries of objects, some of them old, rare, and precious, all related to the coconut tree. Second, large panels and posters, educational and recreational, on the coconut, its agriculture and its uses. Third, a living collection of palms, presenting various types of dwarfs, huge or amazing coconuts. This will include the sale of seed nuts and seedlings, and the offer of tasting sessions of coconut water from various varieties. Fourth, training activities, such as traditional oil extraction, cosmetic production, weaving of hats and other objects, use of coconut wood, etc. Fifth, a restaurant specializing in all preparations made from coconut palms, salty and sweet, or dishes using coconut design. Sixthly, a shop selling all kind of coconut products. And seventhly, a health center using coconut oil from other products derived from the coconut tree. Here is a possible architectural design of a coconut ecomuseum. In this example, we show a large ecomuseum. It represents an architecture in the shape of a coconut. A covered oval-shaped gallery allows you to visit the place even if it rains, and to see the large educational panels arranged around this gallery. There is an oval-shaped building, with a patio in the center. Inside, there are closed exhibition rooms which contain the precious objects, a store, and a center for aesthetics, body and hair care, and massages. In the center, a fountain that symbolizes coconut water. There are also tables and a restaurant, with an outdoor part, a covered part, and an indoor part, so that people can eat even it's raining. Finally, there is a collection of living coconut trees, and a nursery, so people can buy seedlings and seed nuts. The Ecomuseum is a flexible concept that can be declined in different sizes. It can be implemented by different stakeholders. A farmer alone could create a small coconut ecomuseum in his plantation. The ecomuseum can also be created by a group or a cooperative of farmers, by a village or a municipality. Finally, larger regional and national initiatives can be designed. If the project is well set up, you can obtain aid and funding from both the ministries of tourism and agriculture. Dear participants and colleagues, thank you for listening, and do not forget to visit our website.